According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Let me start off by saying that the queen and worker bees are always female, and drones are always male. Okay, start. Through my work experience, I got to meet some specialised beekeepers who talked to me about the ins and outs of bees, and even let me help put up some beehives, and understandably, consequently, get stung by a bee for the first time. <laughs> to understand how bees affect and are affected by the ecosystem, we must understand how they came to be. History. 25 million years after the first flowers, this being 270 million years ago, bees evolved creating an explosion of flower diversity as co-evolution began to take place. Bees, wasps and ants all evolved from a single ancestor, the sawfly. 100 million years ago, wasps used to feed on beetles which were incidentally covered in pollen and over time, Wasps began to like the taste of the pollen over the beetles, like eating a Nutella sandwich, and after a while realising that you like the Nutella over the sandwich, and just decide you'd just rather eat that instead. Bees grew hairier bodies, creating pollen baskets and greater pollen understanding. 55 million years ago, bees began to create social divides, meaning worker and queen bees were defined. This is a bizarre way to evolve, as typically natural selection enhances an individual by passing on genes by having offspring. This social divide means that the only the queens are allowed to produce offspring, only allowing a certain set of genes to be carried through. Though workers have organs to reproduce, they are incapable of doing so, as they were born via the queen not to be allowed to do so. Specifically, around 35 million years ago, honeybees became a specialised species. 250,000 years ago, humans arrived on the bee scene, and for better or worse, we've been fairly prominent to bees. Pretty much as soon as humans could make fire, they could control bees by using the smoke to make bee raids on wild nests safer to accomplish, as smoke calmed bees. The honeybee was known to be kept in ancient Egypt 4,500 years ago, as honey in ancient tooth was found to be still edible today. 1,500 years after that, traces have also been found in China too, and it was only until the Middle Ages that beekeeping took off in the West. Keeping bees was seen as a monastic way of life. Swarms were kept in skeps made of clay, hollow logs, or woven sticks, and at the end of the season they kill all of the bees and take the honey. Modern beehives didn't appear till the middle of the 19th century, when Langstroth created a hive with movable combs. This was way more bee friendly than just killing them when you're done. Physiology Bees are the best insects adapted to pollinating plants. This goes from their special ability to recognise different flowers and the fibrous hairs covering their bodies, perfect for collecting pollens. Their 15mm bee body contains a head, thorax and abdomen. Their head contains 5 eyes, 3 simple and 2 compound. The compound containing 150 tiny lenses, perfect for detecting flower patterns and to see light to navigate even on cloudy days. Drones have larger bug shaped eyes, covering over half of its face so they can spot a queen from really long distances. It, the head also contains proboscis, which are essentially the bee's mouth, they are tube like to dig into flowers. These play a big part in pollination, thus workers' proboscis are longer than drones and queens. Worker bees' mouths also don't contain teeth, they are spoon-shaped to aid in wax moulding. Queen bees also produce pheromones from their head, and that lets the colony know if she's alive and healthy. The thorax contains a powerhouse of muscles that work both the front forelegs and the wings. The front legs have comb-like structures to use when getting pollen off themselves, and the wings are in a set of four, with the front two attaching via small hooks to the hind wings, so they move in unison. Bees are able to disconnect their wings from their muscles, and when they do this, their movement in the muscles is transferred to create heat energy. The abdomen contains the stinger, hind legs, and is covered in yellow and black hair as a predator to terror and pollen grain attractor. The hind legs contain the pollen baskets, which is a place where bees store most of the pollen when collecting it. Since a worker is genetically identical to the queen, the way they were fed at a young age means that they look different to the queen, who is much longer and elegantly built, her abdomen being slimmer to allow her to have easy access into the comb when laying eggs. And although drones are the same weight as the queens, they're squarer and stockier. Bee relations. In total, there are seven honeybee species, six of these originating in Southeast Asia, and only two species having been domesticated, these being the Western and Asian honeybees. 
queen bees can choose whether to have drones or workers depending on if she lays fertilised or unfertilised eggs. For the most part, the queen will only lay fertilised worker eggs with twice as many chromosomes as the drones. This is referred to as haplodiploidy. Since drone offspring are not fertilised, they only contain 50% of the queen's chromosomes, and no father chromosomes, since they don't have one. Worker bees, however, since they are fertilised, have both drone and queen chromosomes. Along with 50% of the queen's chromosomes, the drones give 100% of their chromosomes, since they only have half the amount of chromosomes to begin with. This means that the workers are 75% related to each other, but only 50% related to their mother, the queen. Gestation Worker drone and queen gestation periods after being born. Workers have three days of being an egg before they spend the next six days as a larvae feeding. The larvae will then spin a cocoon and transform under a sealed cap for 11 days before emerging on the 21st day. Drones, however, take seven days to feed as larvae, and instead of one day to emerge from the 11-day cocooning, they will take three days. Queens, on the complete other hand, as well as having a fancy cup-shaped queen cell, they only take five days to feed as larvae. However, she is fed purely royal jelly and royal jelly alone. Then she only takes seven days in the cocoon before emerging on the 16th day. Queens take less time as it is a competition to see which queen will emerge first, and the first queen to emerge will kill the other baby queens. Queen bees, laying 2,000 eggs a day and being fed by the other bees, she is incapable of feeding herself. The queen is barely even the dictator of the hive. If she fails to commit to her duties or loses her pheromones, the workers won't hesitate to throw her out. She generally lives for two years, however, an unmated queen is just gets kicked out of the hive. Drones Pretty much the only use for a drone while she's still in a hive is temperature regulation, since the hive must at all times be 35 to 37 degrees Celsius, even in winter. The main role of the drone outside of the hive is to mate with queens from other colonies. Drones are kicked out of the hive if they are not needed, since they are pretty useless and lazy. Even though they can feed themselves, they prefer being fed and bug busy workers to feed them, so in winter the hive just ejects them all together. Worker bees will over the course of their lifetime be hired for different jobs. Generally, the roles are received by age, graduating from one job to another. As a worker matures, she'll be able to do different jobs. For the first two days of their lives, juvenile bees are responsible for cleaning cells and keeping them warm. Bees keep the cells warm by getting into empty cells next to the brood cells and generating heat to keep them warm. Around five days old, they'll begin nursing older larvae, and they'll move on to the younger larvae when they're around ten days old, as they are slightly harder to feed, and they now have experience. They feed the young by converting pollen into royal jelly in their mouth glands, and regurgitating it into the young. Over time, this food is dilated, except if it's the queen larvae. At 17 days old, they are replaced by the younger bees, and they move on to maintenance, such as wax production, building and undertaking, which is essentially removing dead bees from the hive to prevent disease. You can tell bees are wax building, as they will form a string of bees, bridging a gap in the frame. To be able to produce wax at the right consistency, a bee's body temperature must be 45 degrees Celsius. In preparation for foraging, 21-day-old bees guard the hive to become familiar with the outdoors. Guard bees protect and control who comes in and out of the hive, attacking any intruders or robbers such as wasps and bees from other hives. Other jobs around the hive entrance include fanning, since this is where the bees will regulate the airflow in the hive. Humid air is pulled out and cool dry air is fanned in by the bees' wings. These bees will also send out pheromones so foragers can track the hive. Finally, at ages 35 to 45 days, workers become foragers. This is the most dangerous job, and as such, only the oldest bees do this. There are both foraging scouts, who look for the best flowers based on distance, nectar quality and abundance, and forager bees, who go out and get the pollen and nectar from the flowers, bringing back to the hive. Bees will explore up to three miles from the hive, and when they come out, they will typically fly straight up into the sky. They prefer to fly 30 metres from the ground as they would prefer not to die. In the summer, worker bees live for about six weeks, and in the winter bees typically live for up to six months.